picture is this. You're on the beach. And the timing is absolutely perfect. You scramble for your phone to capture those very, very vivid colored skies. But the photograph on your phone isn't anywhere close to the beauty of the moment. What you saw isn't what you got. Sounds familiar? This was a common occurrence in the early days of mobile photography. But over the past few years, have you seen what's happened? Mobile camera technology has leapfrogged perhaps more drastically than any other feature on a smartphone. With camera technology improving by leaps and bounds, digital cameras, especially point and shoot cameras, have been deemed completely and totally irrelevant relevant and advances in computational photography mean that DSLR level imaging is the next target for smartphones. In fact, we've already crossed a DSLR level in terms of imaging capabilities. Now, if you think I'm actually joking, let me prove it to you. Look, you can't beat physics. DSLRs excel because of their massive sensor, their lenses. A phone, on the other hand, wins out with the fact that it's everywhere. The convenience of fitting in your pocket, ready to capture a moment, whatever moment it is, wherever you are. But what if there was a way to combine the powers of both DSLR and the convenience of phones? That's where computational photography steps in. Using the tremendous processing power of modern smartphones, phone manufacturers are trying and managing to bend physics with computing. Today, smartphone cameras are capable of capturing pro-grade images on almost any sort of lighting conditions. And the reason for that is one of the easiest forms of computational photography, fast HDR. The ability to capture three or more frames at different exposure levels while ensuring the best detail from each photograph and then merged all of them into one perfect shot. Convenience is a major factor as well when talking about mobile photography. After all, the best camera is the one you have in hand. Low light or night photography has, however, traditionally eluded smartphones. You know, everything's so small and slim, tough to get it right. Enter computational photography again. By using a burst of long exposure photos and combining them, it's now possible to get a very clean and bright low light image. Yes, the smartphone in your pocket is finally getting close to the capabilities of a high-end SLR and that too without having to drag a whole kit of lenses along. It's a sign of the times that a mind-boggling 1.43 trillion photos were taken in 2020 alone. Predictably, mobile phones took the lead and accounted for a whopping 90.9% of the total photos taken. Digital cameras made up about 7.3% of the photos taken. Tablets again, a measly 1.8%. Now, the convenience of using smartphones as cameras manifests itself in more ways than one. Sure, a phone is easy to carry around, but it's also significantly easier to actually share images as well. A high quality that can be instantly emailed or shared with friends on Instagram or Facebook, that's what photography is all about, capturing and sharing the moments instantly. Buyer preferences also indicate the same trend now. A great camera system is the top requirement of almost all smartphone buyers today. The rise in smartphone photography and buyer expectations has had one more very major effect. Smartphone manufacturers are now doubling down on pushing the capabilities of modern day silicon and cameras from one to almost five cameras on a phone. It's computational photography that is the thread that binds them all together and silicon level enhancements from companies like Qualcomm that actually enable all this magic to actually happen. And behind all this software and camera enhancements are chipset level features leveraging Qualcomm technologies step by step. They're at the forefront of innovation in camera enhancement feature. So let's hear from them on what is the future of computational camera techniques. My first guest is Kedar Kondap. He's the VP for Product Management for Qualcomm Technologies. Thank you so much for joining me. My first question is, can you let us know what exactly is computational photography? Hi Rajiv, thanks a lot for inviting me to the show. First, let's talk about smartphone cameras in general. The number of cameras in each smartphone and the megapixels for each camera in the smartphone have evolved over the years. Now, to enable a smartphone camera to process high quality photos and high quality videos in real time, we need advanced computational capabilities. There are several camera features, such as software bokeh, in which the essence is that it blurs the background for a professional grade depth of field effect, a high dynamic range, 
for best color processing or even shooting pictures from multiple cameras concurrently. These capabilities are the essence of computational photography techniques. All these features require a huge amount of data to be processed at high speeds in real time. This constitutes what is called computational photography. And how is Qualcomm actually leveraging computational photography to change the dynamics of smartphone photography? The computational power for smartphone cameras comes from the image signal processor, also called the ISP, the digital signal processor, also called the DSP, the graphics engine, called the GPU, as well as the CPU. All of these are an integral part of the Snapdragon platform. These components improve the performance and the efficiency of photography and videography. Take, for example, the Snapdragon 888 platform. Devices based on this platform have been ranked top most in the world in terms of their camera capabilities. Furthermore, the presence of super fast 5G connectivity, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on Snapdragon platforms makes it very easy for consumers to capture, edit and share these high quality images and videos on the go. Now talking about Snapdragon 888, can you please let us know in detail the camera capabilities of this platform? The Snapdragon 888 platform triples down on the future of computational photography. It has a triple ISP, which delivers triple camera concurrency and triple parallel processing. Triple concurrency has enabled users to capture videos from three different cameras at the exact same time, all in 4K HDR quality. What this means is that a user can capture three photos at the exact same time, all at 28 megapixel at 30 frames per second with zero shutter lag. Snapdragon 888 can capture images and videos at speeds of 2.7 gigapixels per second. This speed enables outstanding burst photography, allowing users to capture 120 photos in one second, all at 12 megapixels. No mobile platform has done that until now. A combination of breakthrough speed, computational HDR for video, low light architecture, inbuilt artificial intelligence capabilities, make Snapdragon 888 the best platform for camera enthusiasts. And of course, joining us now is everybody's favorite, Manu Jain joins me. He, of course, is the Managing Director for Xiaomi India. Manu, great to have you on the show. Manu, I have to start by congratulating you on the recent launch of the Mi 11 Ultra in the Indian market. Tell me, what is the key USP of this device? It's got so much, but I'm pinning you down. Key USP. Hi, with Mi 11 Ultra, we have launched the most iconic and the most premium smartphone of the year. This is a phone which comes with features that have never been heard of. This is the first phone to come with a triple primary camera setup, a 50 megapixel plus 48 megapixel plus 48 megapixel that makes it the DxO number one camera phone in the world. It comes with 10-bit E4 Super AMOLED display. It comes with Harman Kardon sound and a 67 watt wireless charging. And Manu, what makes the Mi 11 Ultra camera a super camera? Mi 11 Ultra has probably the best camera setup in the entire world. As I said, this is the first phone to come with a triple primary camera setup of 50 megapixel plus 48 megapixel plus 48 megapixel. We used to get one inch big camera sensors on DSLR and now we have an almost one inch big camera sensor on a smartphone. All three of them support 8K video recording. It supports OIS. It has the widest wide angle and the biggest zoom as big as 120X. And Manu, what made you choose the Snapdragon 888 for your super phone. Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 is probably the most powerful processor. Under the hood, it offers some incredible, such as amplifying the performance and efficiency with its five nanometer power efficient manufacturing process. And it has a custom CPU, Cryo 680, that further enhances the performance with its super fast computation. From the content consumption to high level gaming graphics, Mi 11 Ultra boasts an immersive viewing experience with its Qualcomm Adreno 660 GPU that delivers extraordinary graphics with low power consumption. With its super performance, Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 can also be called as a performance of connectivity powerhouse with its third edition Qualcomm Snapdragon X60 5G modem. 
It further enhances the user experience by boasting super fast multi gigabyte 5G speeds, unparalleled global 5G coverage, and a full day battery life. Thank you, Manu, for joining me. Great to have you on the show.